Hi guys and gals. Um, I'll do the housekeeping in a minute when I've just lit this thing. It keeps going out for some reason. I've forgotten the name of the pipe, but you'll recognise it from the slots and the little paper filter. It was given to me by Tim. One of his estate pipes. Yesterday I was watching a video by Drew of the Shed um, on the soup question. And I suggest you go and look at that video before you finish the rest of this one so that you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll twiddle my thumbs while you're doing it. Well, his video started off something in my mind. It hooked into something that happened. As clergy, we had a thing called clergy chapter. It was the local group of clergy who got together. With one of the senior clergy in the chapter called the Rural Dean. And we'd meet for a meal maybe, or we'd meet for a morning or an afternoon. And sometimes the meetings were just boring business meetings. You know, the bishop says we should do this. The church wardens say we should do that. I've just had a letter from the diocese that says we've got to raise more money. That kind of thing. And you sometimes wondered what on earth you were doing there. Was it really worth giving up an afternoon or a morning's work for that? And then one day, um, the rural dean, as usual, said goodbye to everybody. And before he did so, he went round the room and, as a last sort of question, said, how are you? And the usual answer was fine, which, if you're a member of AA, you'll know means fucked up, insecure, neurotic and emotional. But we always say, don't we, oh, I'm fine, or I'm all right. And all the clergy left. And exactly an hour later, the rural dean rang them up, telling them that one of the members of the group, when he got home, had hung himself in his garage and had just been found. You can imagine what that did to that group of clergy. They'd been sat there with him. They'd been talking. Um, he'd been asked how he was. And he'd said, I'm fine. Well, I can tell you that every chapter meeting after that in that um area in that deanery was very different first of all it was emphasized that anything during that meeting was confidential with that meeting none of the bishops or church leaders would know it wasn't their business it was ours as a a group of clergy There was a lot of fun during those meetings. We had a laugh. Um, we talked about things that were problems for us in the parish. We talked about all sorts of things. But at the end, the rural dean would go round as usual and say, Now really, 
how are you? How are things going? Is there anything that we can help with? Anything that you want? And it became one of the best chapters that I ever went to. You knew that you could say, oh, it's bloody awful in the parish. I've got these three stupid people who are making my life a misery. I'm trying to change things and they're always putting their big hairy feet in or whatever it was or we're having a bad time at home. My wife says she never sees me. My children are playing up and I'm exhausted. You know, it became a time when you really received help. You really received healing. I'm not sure what it has for the pipe community, what the thing is. I'm, I'm not going to say we should be asking each other, now, really, how are you? Because that's up to you and to your friends. But I know a lot of times you're speaking to each other on Fox, Foxter or whatever it is. Um, you speak to each other in other ways. Some of you live close together and you're friends. And maybe there might come the time to ask, no, really, how are you? The trouble is when you've got a group of clergy together, we'd, we'd got so tired of carrying other people's burdens, of the things that we'd, we'd faced and happened. You know, there are so many baby's deaths that you can take before you begin to wonder what on earth's happening in the world. There are so many, few, uh, you know, accidents, um, deaths, weddings, funerals, baptisms. And I used to hate weddings because the people always wanted the first class job done. And they usually got it. But the pressure was a, a tremendous. And you wondered what they thought of God in it sometimes. So when you got clergy together, we usually talked about the funerals I've known and, you know, some of the things that had happened during a funeral. And believe me, some funny things do happen during funerals. A friend of mine fell in the grave. It had been snowing and he stepped up to what he thought was the edge of the grave. And it wasn't, it was a shelf of snow. And the lady who told me about it, I said, were you, sh you know, were you shocked? And she said, no, we burst out laughing because he swore on the way down. Um, you know, we all have those times and we all have that pressure. And sometimes it's good to be able to talk about it. Not undressing and pouring it all out, baby. But just being able to say, I've had a hell of a day. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. Um, I'll end up with a joke. <laughs> this guy goes into a pub. And he's got a little 12-inch man with him. And the barman says, you know, who's that? And he says, so he's a mate. Um, it's, you know, nice. And they, they were talking, the three of them. And the barman poured the little man a, a small beer and a pint for the other man. And the little man said, do you mind if I play the piano? And the barman looks and sort of surprised. And the little man goes to the piano and perfect playing. You know, everybody wonders how he can reach the notes. And the playing is just wonderful. And whilst he's playing, the barman says to the says to the man who brought him in, where did you find a friend like that? And he says, well, he's, I let this genie out of a bottle and he gave me a wish. Um, and he said, do you know, 
I swear I didn't ask for a 12-inch pianist. <laughs>